Live from the Icebox Studio in Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania, it's the Bill and Corey Show. I'm Bill. And I'm Corey. Yeah, this week we're going to uh, review some recent tech support questions. Uh, first question's for Corey. It is on our uh, inline purifier. Mm -hmm. And the question is, can our inline purifier be used on these gases, sulfur dioxide, nitric oxide, or nitrous oxide? The quick answer to that question is no, they cannot. This particular one is an oxygen trap. They come in, you know, there's also a moisture trap and a hydrocarbon trap as well. And you put these on the end and you can see there's tubes and then the gas passes through and it uh, purifies it. Um, for the case of this one though, our carrier gases are helium, nitrogen, argon, and, and uh, hydrogen. And those are typically the gases that these are used, just typical lab gases that these can be used on. Okay. Yeah, I want to point out these connectors mm -hmm. are uh, a little Schrader valve in it. It's like your bicycle tire. So when you, uh, well, you screw them in, it'll pierce the foil on the purifier. And then when you have to change out the purifier, uh, you can just disconnect it and it'll seal off the line. So you don't need to have a bypass line when you have these mm -hmm. installed or isolation valves. It's, all, it's all right there. Mm -hmm. Good. And not, the second question is also with, on the inline purifier. They're asking about, uh, can this be used with methane as the carrier gas? Uh, I, you know, after just saying our carrier gases are helium, nitrogen, argon, and, and hydrogen, in this case, yes, it can be used in that. Um, CH4 with less than 0.5% oxygen, this can be used on. The one unfortunate thing, though, is it may trap some of the methane as well. So, and the second part of that question, I do believe, was can you regenerate a a uh, in purifier, and the, the answer is no, you cannot do that. Unfortunately, in order to regenerate them, you have to get them up to high temperatures, which are above what the housing can do. Okay, good. And this is a question, is the uh, SEQ 4333B available? I'll explain what that is in a second. Hmm. It says, we have a chlorine lecture bottle, and they asked if the SEQ 32 uh, 3C is good for chlorine as well, or 4323C. So um, the first one they talked about is our um, Monel lecture bottle control valve. Uh, and it's going to be your preferred one for chlorine service because it's Monel. Monel is more chlorine resistant than uh, stainless steel. Uh, it's a needle valve. Typically comes with a CJ180 on the inlet. Get a, obviously, you get a washer with it. Compression fitting on the outlet. And we also send a, a piece of Monel tubing with it. Um, so that's that. And the other one is the 4323C. That's a, the stainless steel version of it. And it, kind of the same setup. So this, this is acceptable for use in chlorine service. Uh, Monel is your better selection um, for chlorine. Oh, this is a, here's a question for me. <clears throat> what is the impact or consequence of accidentally installing a 6103 series flash arrester? designated for oxygen service into a flammable gas line. And then second part of the question is, what is the impact or consequence of accidentally installing a 6103 series flash arrestor designated for flammable gas service onto an oxygen line? So when you buy, this is our, uh, our brass uh, flash arrestor, and um, it is, we sell it for flammable use and also oxygen use. The, really, the only difference is, is it, it's the same body. We just put on a different label. We've got a red label for flammable gas and green for oxygen. Um, you have to be careful, though. If you, so if you get it right out of the box and you put it in the wrong service, that's, that'll be fine. It's going to be labeled wrong. You might want to take the label off and get, another la get the proper label on there. We don't suggest changing service. So if you had it in flammable gas service, you don't want to change it over to oxygen mm -hmm. service. Uh, one of the big hazards is, is if you have an inflammable gas service 
and you get uh, something that's not some stuff in there that's mm -hmm. not compatible with oxygen. Now you put oxygen in there, and this could uh, this could burn up. And not a lot is compatible with oxygen. <laughs> no, no, yeah. So if you got something dirty like uh, you know acetylene going through there, and you got some acetone that happens to be in there, then uh, that's a that's a bad idea. So you shouldn't change uh, gas service once it's in service. But if you get it right out of the box, it'll work fine. Okay, and we got a question on for Corey on the eighty sixty seven leak detector. Can it detect xenon? Yes, it can. So this is our eighty sixty seven leak detector, as you can see. It's, that's pretty much the nose of it. You know, the tube. You stick it to where you think you're leaking, and you turn it on, and you can pick different groups about which. So there's five groups, and you can pick different groups depending on what gas you're trying to to detect. And so in this case, it's warming up and it's zeroing with the air around you. So that makes it difficult to say do nitrogen because nitrogen's in the air. So it won't work <laughs> to detect nitrogen leaks. But right now it's zeroing and there we go. And then if you touch the tip, it'll beep because it reacts to your finger, but that'll tell you that there is a leak that's been detected. Yeah, it's picking up the oils on your finger. Yes, and so we'll turn that off and it comes with, you know, this tube you can put on the end of it if you have trouble getting into hard to reach areas as well. And so there is, and we'll be putting it on our, on the uh, website, the gas list. Well, we do, we do have a gas list on there now, but it's, it's more of your common gas. Yes. And uh, there's a more extensive gas list that we have to um, also put on our website. You Gotta go. hold the power button to turn it off. <laughs> Yeah, and with this, uh, you have to be careful zeroing it out. If you're in an area that has a lot of gas leaking, you, you don't want to be trying to zero it out there and, and try to look for, look for that gas. So you need to take it outside the room where you could have a, where you're going to check for gas leaks and make sure it's zeroed out properly. Okay, so got a question here. I am interested in a 3700 series low pressure line regulator. That's the 3702. It's asking for the 3702 or the 3702 510. What is the difference between these two? And then I need to reduce CO2 slash air pressure from an air, no, from a tank, 5% <laughs> CO2 air. Uh, how do I connect this regulator to the tank? Thanks. So this is our uh, 3702 regulator. A pancake regulator, it's right? A, yeah, we call it pancake regulator. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between this regulator and one that has the 510 at the end is that the, the 510 one will have a CGA 510 fitting on there, which for flammable liquid, I'm sorry, <laughs> fuel gases uh, such as propane. It is only rated to 250 PSI inlet pressure, so you cannot install this directly on a high pressure cylinder. Um, so it, it, we've had people ask this question before, and sometimes they've wanted to have one whole big regulator made up, um, which is kind of difficult. So you, you need a, like at least a single stage regulator uh, before this to get the pressure down below 250 PSI uh, to feed this. And this comes with a large gauge. This for the 3702 is a half a PSI to five PSI uh, outlet pressure, comes with uh, quarter inch male pipe thread on the outlets and we also have hose barbs if you want to hook hoses up to it. Now this one it's kind of if you want to adjust the pressure on this you have to take off the little security cap and then you put a little screwdriver in there to uh, adjust the pressure. So that's the 3702. Next question is, uh, somebody has a, oh, they have a technical question regarding the 9360 series regulator they purchased. There is this regulator rated for sub-atmospheric delivery pressure. Now the 9360 is our semiconductor grade regulator. It's welded VCR connections on it. It's got the really low RA finish on it. Um, and 
The one he asked about does not is not for sub-atmospheric delivery. Uh, luckily for this customer, uh, we had some uh, regulator bodies in our clearance bin, mm -hmm. um, so we're, he went and bought that. So it's kind of a win-win. Get rid of old stock. Yeah, get old nice. stock. And then last question is for Corey. Somebody's looking for a CGA 705 gasket. Wash, well, washer gasket. Washer. So this is a, a washer, and um, there's a few CGAs, and I don't know them off the top of my head, that require a washer in order to connect to a cylinder, in order to make sure the connection's tight. And we sell them all on our online store, mathisandgas.com. And... Store.mathison.com. <laughs> you don't shop there often. I it's just it's on you know I have it on my uh, favorites of course and I go there every day but I never have to type in the address. Okay. But all yeah all the washers are sold. Um, typically sets of three or five. Or, no, you can buy them individually. You know, individually as well. Yeah, we sell them individually, uh, but people usually buy a bunch. You usually buy a bunch. And we have uh, well it's seven oh five and of course we have the three twenty three thirty yes mm -hmm. at six sixty yes. six seventy and then the one eighty ones. And 171s. Yes. And so these are just nylon gasket or nylon washers, nothing special, nothing fancy about Teflon. them. Teflon. Teflon. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Teflon. Teflon. Okay. And that's, uh, that's all the questions we have for this week. Um, and please tune in next week at 10 a.m. East Coast time for another show of uh, another round of the Bill and Corey show. And uh, if you can't remember that, you can always subscribe to our channel and you'll send a get a notification about the show. And set your VCRs for next Thursday at 10 a.m. Don't want to miss it. Okay.